When you decide to take your trip to fabled Alaska and the Yukon, you'll certainly want to choose Canadian Pacific's modern, comfortable Princess Patricia for this unforgettable voyage. This fine ship has been especially designed for cruises up the inside passage to Alaska. The exciting itinerary of this glamorous trip will take you north from Vancouver to Prince Rupert, Ketchikan, Wrangell, Juneau, Skagway, and on to Carcross in the Yukon Territory. The starting point of every Princess Patricia cruise is Vancouver, principal city of British Columbia. This thriving city, with its soaring skyscrapers, can easily be reached by Canadian Pacific's transcontinental railway or the worldwide services of Canadian Pacific Airlines. And when you arrive, you'll find fine public buildings like the new post office, just a few minutes drive from the many magnificent sand beaches situated near the heart of this Pacific Coast metropolis. Before your Princess Cruise departs, you may decide to take a refreshing dip in the calm waters of the Pacific at English Bay. This happy youngster starts gaily into the water, but then thinks better of it. Perhaps he'll grow up to be a lumberjack, still trying to stay out of the water in a log rolling contest. Such lumberjack festivals are typical of the attractions in and around Vancouver for the visitor. At Vancouver also, the Skirl of Bagpipes may herald a presentation of colorful Scottish dances performed by charmingly costumed descendants of early settlers who came from Scotland. As we watch this traditional dance, we are reminded that British Columbia was originally settled in this area almost 100 years ago by pioneers who came from the British Isles, and the old traditions are still kept alive here. When the time comes for you to start your voyage to Alaska and the Yukon, you'll find your cruise ship waiting for you just a short distance from the center of downtown Vancouver. And you'll thrill with anticipation as you walk up the gangway of the Princess Patricia and then enter the passageways paneled with fine Canadian woods. You may choose from a variety of cabin accommodations knowing that every effort has been made to make your cabin inviting and comfortable. This will be your home away from home for the length of the cruise. When your friendly and courteous steward leaves, you'll begin to feel the exciting anticipation that comes with this interesting sea voyage holiday. The first part of your trip through the inside passage will take you north from Vancouver to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, a distance of 572 miles. The first morning following your evening departure will find your Princess Patricia passing through the calm waters of Johnstone Straits. The bracing sea air will be mixed with the fragrance of the pines which line both shores as you travel alongside majestic Vancouver Island, 282 miles long and 60 miles wide. It was first discovered by the famed Spanish explorer, Senor Bodega y Cuadra in 1775. Perhaps you may decide to actually visit Vancouver Island when you return from Alaska. Canadian Pacific's own ferry services can take you there from Seattle or Vancouver. As the Princess Patricia cruises north, you'll learn to play shuffleboard and perhaps even enter into friendly rivalry with the many friends you'll make among the fellow passengers on board. Giant checkers, manipulated by hooks, are another deck game you'll want to master. After this, lunchtime will find you joining your newfound friends for a leisurely meal in the well-appointed dining room. Back on deck, whales and porpoises frolicking nearby can often be seen by voyagers who keep a sharp lookout from the comfortable lounging areas. Soon your cruise ship will enter its first stretch of open water at Queen Charlotte Sound, named after Queen Charlotte Sophia, wife of King George III. Then in three hours, you'll once more be in the sheltered waters of the inside passage 
at Fitzhugh Sound, with its fishing boats and its tree-covered shores. Soon afterwards, you'll enjoy the evening of your first full day on the Princess Patricia. Women passengers may want to visit the fine beauty shop aboard the ship so they can look their best. In the dining room, you'll enjoy friendly and courteous service provided by experienced personnel. Tasty salads might start off your evening meal. And this will be followed by a selection of delicious foods, wholesomely prepared and appetizingly served. A passing motorboat may welcome you the next morning as your ship enters the mouth of the Skeena River. And then the sound of the ship's horn will herald the fact that you are about to arrive at Prince Rupert, first stop on your cruise up the inside passage. The experienced captain of the Princess Patricia will skillfully bring the ship alongside the dock where passengers may disembark for an entire morning of sightseeing. Prince Rupert, only 40 miles from the Alaska border, is the northernmost coastal city of British Columbia. It is a major shipping center for wood products and fish. Even this far north, at the same latitude as Labrador on the east coast, the climate here is so mild that flowers grow freely in little baskets on the city's lampposts. This city has a totem pole park where towering examples of this creative Indian art may be examined. They stand alongside the interesting Museum of Northern British Columbia which has a comprehensive display of the arts, crafts, and culture of the original Indian inhabitants of this area. Among the many exhibits are some fine examples of the wooden masks carved by the Haida Indians and the Chilkoots and worn in their ceremonial dances. In some parts of British Columbia and Alaska, it is still possible to see similar masks being worn by present-day Indian dancers who carry on the ancient traditions and heritage of their colorful ancestors. In this dance, a raven tells some brave warriors where to find a bear which has killed their chief. Inside the museum in Prince Rupert, it is often possible to see totem poles being carved by Haida Indian artisans. When finished, the totem poles often tower up to 50 feet in height. Hundreds of fishing boats make Prince Rupert their headquarters.
and inside one of the modern fish processing plants, you can see fish fillets being cut and packed. Perhaps here is where you'll have a chance to see the famous Mounties, as they are known throughout the world. The scarlet coat of the Mounties has been the symbol of law, order, and justice to Canadians since 1873. Today, visitors to Canada find officers of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police a reminder of the nation's exciting history. When the time comes to leave Prince Rupert, you'll board the Princess Patricia in eager anticipation of still more interesting sights in store for you. The next stage of your cruise will be to Ketchikan, Alaska, a distance of 108 miles. Arriving the same day after passing through Holiday Passage, Dixon Entrance, and Revillagigedo Channel, named after a Viceroy of Mexico. At Angle Point, an hour before your arrival at Ketchikan, United States Customs Inspectors will board the ship from a motor launch to make their inspection. In this way, you'll be ready for your sightseeing without delay the moment the ship docks. Ketchikan, your first port in Alaska on this cruise, is a city situated on Revillagigedo Island. It was founded in 1880 by Mark Martin, a sawmill operator, who saw the great potential of the lumber industry in this area. At the docks, you'll see that wood product industries are still important in the local economy. The substantial federal building reminds you of Ketchikan's importance and the fact that you are now actually on Alaskan soil. Visitors are thrilled by the fishing harbor with its older houses and by the tremendous king salmon which can be seen jumping in the harbor during the spawning season. These great fish range up to 80 pounds in weight and can easily be examined in the shallow waters of nearby streams. A short distance from town is famous Saxman Indian Village where an unusual display of Indian totem poles can be inspected. Such totems have been carved since time immemorial by the Indians of the Pacific Northwest and Alaska. Contrary to popular belief, the totem is not an idol and has no actual religious significance. It is usually a memorial or history of a particular person or tribe. Many of the totem poles here have long, bare areas leading up to a surmounting carving such as an important person. One of the most famous personage totems is one carved in 1882. This one honoring Abraham Lincoln. A short drive through streets which will remind you of the old gold rush days and then back to the Princess Patricia and you'll be on your way to new adventures. During the next part of your cruise from Ketchikan to Juneau, a distance of 270 miles, your ship will pass close to Wrangell, Alaska, but you will actually stop at this little fishing village founded in 1821 on the southbound return trip. On the way to Juneau, you'll begin to see towering snow-capped mountains like those of the Norwegian fjords, and you may also be fortunate enough to sight small ice floes as they drift out on the tide and can be seen for about an hour as you pass through Frederick Sound and Stevens Passage. But deck checkers may be even more exciting until the Princess Patricia begins to enter Gastineau Channel, at the end of which is Juneau, 
founded during the gold rush days and nestling at the foot of 4,000 foot Mount Juno. Across the end of the Gastineau Channel is a bridge linking Juno with the town of Douglas on the opposite side. And soon you and your fellow passengers will have a close-up look at this noted city. Juno prides itself on its attractive modern hotels and its business section and banking facilities. The Federal Capitol Building is a reminder that Juneau was named Capital of Alaska in 1908 and began to function as such a few years later. The Governor of Alaska lives in this fine mansion. The homes of modern Alaskans are a far cry from the log cabins of their pioneer ancestors who came here seeking gold or furs. Today's Alaskan often lives in a comfortable up-to-date house with all conveniences and you'll find such houses lining the road which leads to the famous Mendenhall Glacier, only 14 miles from town. Overlooking the glacier is a new lookout house built by the National Park Service. And from here, you can have a magnificent view of one of the world's most famous glaciers. A short walk brings you close to this awe-inspiring mass of slowly moving ice, a thrilling reminder of the glacial age when such ice covered most of North America. Once more back in Juneau, you'll find that your gleaming white Princess Patricia will be waiting for you until almost midnight tonight to enable you to have all of the time you'll need for this fascinating part of Alaska. You may want to watch Eskimo ivory carvers at their work as they use age-old methods to carve the intricate designs and tiny figures of their culture on large walrus tusks. The large ivory tusks of the walrus found off the coast of Alaska are quite heavy, and many types of souvenirs for the visitor are carved from them. Here you will also have a unique opportunity to buy some of the fine furs for which Alaska is famous. In some cases, special fur apparel may be ordered and delivery made on the return voyage when the Princess Patricia once more stops at Juneau. Almost every visitor to Juneau wants to see or visit the Red Dog Saloon. This colorfully named gathering place was established in the Gold Rush days, and it still maintains its old-time atmosphere, with its walls covered with guns, bear traps, and other mementos of pioneer days. The queen of the Red Dog Saloon, Hattie herself, will play the piano for you, wearing her harness made of silver dollars. When midnight comes, you'll leave Juno with the music of the old gold rush days still echoing in your memories. During the night, your princess will travel from Juneau to Skagway, a distance of 117 miles, passing up the Lynn Canal, which Captain Vancouver named after his home in England. In the morning, you'll see more of the magnificent mountain scenery every traveler to Alaska looks for. At the foot of some of the mountain ranges, you'll be able to photograph gleaming glaciers. As the Princess Patricia smoothly passes below the snow-clad peaks, you'll soon note that you are arriving at the end of the Lynn Canal and are entering the Chilkoot Inlet, at the end of which is Skagway itself, Mecca of the Gold Rush Days.
A blast from the ship's whistle will inform the people of Skagway that the Princess Patricia is arriving. And after you have docked, you'll be greeted by parka-clad youngsters as you prepare to board a special excursion train waiting for you at the dock. Most visitors to Skagway take this excursion to the Yukon Territory and back in the comfortable parlor cars of the famous White Pass and Yukon Railway, returning to Skagway the same afternoon. Your special train leaves Skagway shortly after the cruise arrives, and soon the powerful twin diesel engines are pulling the cars upward towards White Pass, through which the stampeders of the gold rush days struggled during the winter of 1898. Looking back, you can see Skagway at the head of the Lynn Canal. And then seated at ease in your parlor car, you'll pass the Trail of 98 sign, marking the actual Gold Rush Trail itself. Only 20 miles from Skagway, you'll pass over the crest of White Pass itself at 2,900 feet altitude, and travel for some distance through British Columbia. Forty-one miles from Skagway, you'll begin to travel alongside Lake Bennett, over which 10,000 gold rush stampeders floated in their homemade rafts and boats to reach the Yukon River on their way to the Klondike. Car Cross at the other end of Lake Bennett is actually in the famed Yukon Territory itself. And here a stop is made so that you may acquaint yourself with reminders of the colorful past. An old paddle wheel steamer which plied the rivers and lakes in this area is on display. As is an old stagecoach, and even a tiny engine called the Duchess. The Indians of this area meet the train here, and perhaps this little girl and her big sister, as well as their dog, are just as interested in seeing what you look like as you are in meeting them. Your special Princess Patricia excursion will return to Skagway from Carcross and on this trip, you will have another opportunity to see and photograph more of the unusual sights and magnificent scenery of this territory along the route of the White Pass and Yukon Railway. You'll arrive back in Skagway at the end of the afternoon with plenty of time to explore this famous old gateway to the Yukon. Two miles out of town is the old time graveyard in which is buried Soapy Smith, notorious Alaska badman killed by a member of a vigilante committee in gold rush days. While old-style log cabins can still be found here, the modern public school reminds you that Skagway is still alive and active. But on Broadway, the main street of town, you can still be amused by signs such as Gold Dust Bought and Sourdough Harness Shop. In the old building known as Eagles Hall, the citizens of Skagway provide special entertainment for cruise members, including an enactment of the shooting of Dan McGrew. This might be the Malamute Saloon of the famous poem by Robert Service, who actually lived in the Yukon during the gold rush. As the gamblers concentrate on their game, they haven't noticed a bearded stranger who has come in and is now playing the piano, glaring balefully around the room. interesting to note that all participants in the evening's entertainment are ordinary citizens of Skagway. The 
stranger knows which one of these gamblers is dangerous Dan McGrew, so he challenges Dan McGrew. They both stand, two shots ring out, and when the lights come on again, both men are dead, Dan McGrew and the stranger. In the words of the poem, then, these are the simple facts of the case, and I guess I ought to know. They say the stranger was crazed with hooch, and I'm not denying it so. I'm not so wise as the lawyer guys, and strictly between us two, the woman who kissed him and pinched his poke was the lady that's known as Lou. But life went on in those gold rush days, and the Can-Can girls were soon entertaining the spectators once more, as they'll entertain you. When the Princess Patricia leaves Skagway to begin the southbound voyage to Vancouver, you look forward to the restful return trip aboard this fine cruise ship. Through your mind will run the names of all of the famous places you will have visited when this cruise ends. Carcross, Skagway, Juneau, Wrangell, Ketchikan, Prince Rupert, Vancouver. And as your ship takes you south again, you'll be glad you sailed on the Princess Patricia to Alaska and the Yukon.